All right, my friends, thank you for coming back to the channel, giving this video a watch. God bless you. God keep you, protect you, and all of that kind of thing. Today is a very good day to take a deep breath. You know, if you've been sleeping, if you've been kind of walking around in a stupor, today is a good day to sober up, take a cold shower, you know, metaphorically speaking, because, you know, only psychos take cold showers in real life. But today's a good day to, to take a deep breath and to take a step back and to consider uh, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and how you're preparing for the future and, and, and the world that you live in. Um, today's a really good day for that. You know, when Jesus sent out his 12 disciples, uh, the apostles, uh, to preach the gospel, I mean, he did not, he did not deny reality. Jesus knew uh, the hearts of men. He knew exactly what kind of a situation he was sending his apostles into. And he told them, he said, I send you forth as sheep amidst, in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Like, you got to have both. You have to be innocent. You can't be sinning. Um, so you're innocent as doves, but you're also wise as serpents. That isn't, so that means you don't necessarily, you know, hand yourself over uh, without thinking about it, thinking it through. You don't necessarily um, do stupid things or, you know, you're not naive about your situation. Uh, you got to be smart about things, but innocent at the same time. And Christians really need to learn how to master that in this time, in this age, where there are so many people that absolutely hate your guts. It's not as many as the media would like you to think it is, but it's quite a few. And there are people that if 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 your church were to be next um, and to be burned down or shot up or something like that, um, they would be quite pleased with that. They would think that you deserved it. They would think that that you know you, you had it coming because of this stance or that stance and things like that. And so it's a very it's a dark time out there. there you're a sheep among wolves. You need to be smart, but you need to be innocent at the same time. And we need to live in this world where people hate our guts, they hate our families, because this is the thing, guys, I'm training my kids to be warriors. You know, they're going to understand what's what. They're going to understand what God says about transsexuals. All right, really, they're just transvestite. There's no such thing as a transsexual. They're people that are pretending to be the opposite sex. They know at their young age, they know that that's out there, and they know that that's an affront to God. They know it's evil to the extreme. They get it. They get it. And they know that, that, that those, those kinds of people ought to be avoided. I mean, I didn't need to see uh, a transsexual get violent to know that they were insane. I didn't, I didn't need to see that. All I need to see is a man in a dress, and I know that man is not right in the head, right? Whether it's mental illness, if you want to call it that. I don't call it mental illness. I call it demon possession. That's what I call it. You should not need to know that that person is violent on the inside to know that they're crazy and that they ought to be avoided. And so my kids are going to grow up knowing that. They're, my kids are going to be warriors. They're not going to have any bones about the, uh, 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 any, any, any misconceptions about the situation that they grow up into. But here's the thing. They, they know they're going to also know that the joy of the Lord is their strength, right? So we can't be walking around angry and fearful and all this kind of stuff, getting whipped up into frenzies whenever the media tells us to. That's the thing. You've got to understand right now. At this very moment, it's March 29th, 2023. Every single thing you see in the media right now is attempting to whip people up into a frenzy. It's either you or them, but they want to whip everyone up into a frenzy. They want people to be angry. They want people to be fearful. And the thing is, anger, there's nothing really wrong with anger so long as it's righteous anger. But what they want to do is they want to whip people up into a frenzy so that they make mistakes, so that they make stupid decisions. Because when you're angry, you make stupid decisions. All you got to do is go on YouTube and look up poli various police encounters where the person that they get into that, that they're that they're stopping or for whatever is angry, and they make stupid decisions. They they throw their life away for stupid reasons because of anger. And so, we need to keep that in mind whenever we see these media stories that are obviously intended to make us very angry. 
That doesn't mean that they're all they're they're full of 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 of, of non truths. Like nothing is true about the media story. That's not typically how media stories work. Media stories, the way they work, is that there is some truth there, but then they kind of adjust it. They switch it. They 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 carry forth some narratives, but not others, and they do it all in order to manipulate you. You need to recognize that you're being manipulated all the time. And so here's the thing, guys. What, what, what I think you need to do, what you should do in situations like this, is make it as simple as possible on yourself, right? Prepare as, and, uh, plans and, 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 and get ready. In a, keep it as simple as possible, right? What can you control versus what you can't? The things you can't control, I would spend very little time thinking about them. Very little time. The things you can control, I would spend the most, the majority of my time focused on those things. Men, if you're if you're a Christian man and you have a family, or even if you don't have a family, even if you're single, now's a good time to sell your cloak and buy a sword, if you know what I mean. And now's the time to learn how to use that weapon, by the way. Because here's the thing. It's not necessarily that easy to use a weapon. I remember the first time I went to a range with my pistol. I, I was a horrible shot. Absolutely horrible. And, you know, I didn't even, I, I didn't know this at the time. But actually, my even though I'm right-handed, my dominant eye is my left eye. And so I was acting as if my dominant eye was my right eye. And so, of course, I was missing the target. You know what I mean? And then the next time I went to the range, I realized, oh, my dominant eye is my left eye. And so I had to kind of adjust how I was holding the firearm. This was even, it was way harder with the AR. It was way harder with the AR because all of a sudden I have to hold it a completely different way. But I was a better shot. And then the next time I went, I was even better. And, 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 And there are, it's not necessarily, you know, the easiest thing to be proficient at, uh, at this kind of thing, but you ought to dedicate time and resources and uh, an effort into becoming proficient at that thing. You don't need to be a Navy SEAL, but you do need to know how to use this thing because you can control that. You know what I mean? When a psychopath, whatever kind of psychopath it is, enters your situation, you want to be able to take that psychopath down quick. I was, I, I got to be honest, like, like obviously that video of uh, of the police officers uh, taking down the the threat, um, it was there's a there's a certain sadness there, but but I, I, honestly it was very uh, I, there's a certain satisfaction of a of a, of a murderer uh, meeting their fate quickly. There's a certain satisfaction there, and I'm very glad to have seen that video. I'm suspicious about how quick the video came out. To be perfectly honest with you. I'm glad I saw it, but the thing is, I, I, that doesn't normally happen, and so that gives me a, a, a opportunity to say, you know, wh- why am I seeing this right now? Why am I seeing this right now? Let me let me take a step back. Let me calm down. Let me get my wits about me, and let me start focusing on the things I need to be focusing on. What would happen if somebody came to my house? What would I, would I be ready? Do I have things in the right places at the right time to access them, whether I'm at work or I'm asleep up in my bed or whatever? Do I have, am I ready for any possible situation? And I need to evaluate that for myself. And, and if I'm not, I need to start preparing. And if I am, then maybe I should start practicing. Here's the thing, Christian men. The lion's share of your time should be focused on that kind of stuff. What about when you go to church on Sunday? You caring? Is anybody caring at your church? Like, like, is, like these are questions you need to start thinking about. Like, let's, we can't be fools, right? Because we're sheep among wolves, and therefore we need to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. If you go to a church where they're just innocent as doves, but they forget the wise as serpents part, you might need to reconsider that church. Is that a church where you're actually going to be fed? Do you actually have a shepherd at that church? Because if they forget the wisest serpent's part, I would argue you probably don't have a shepherd there. You have a hireling. And so you need to start considering that. Where you go to church is within your control. And these are the things that you should spend the lion's share of your time thinking about. Instead of what the media wants you to think about. right? Because the media is 
devote the, the media is intentionally uh, driving your attention to certain things and they've got a certain agenda for why they want your attention on certain things and i'm willing to bet i mean call me crazy call me crazy but i'm willing to bet that those certain things those certain reasons that they want you to focus on certain things probably doesn't have your best interest in mind probably not call me crazy call me crazy and so when you feel those, those feelings, right, you feel, you start to spiral, you start to, you feel that anger get up uh, all like, you know, you bubbling up. And I felt it too, guys. I felt it too. I'm not saying I don't feel. I do feel it. But when you start to feel that stuff, that's a good time to sober up, calm down, take a deep breath, and remember where your focus ought to be your children. This is a really good time. This, there's never been a, I saw Owen Benjamin say this, you know, you know, say what you want about Owen Benjamin. I mean, there's definitely criticisms there, but he's right. This is a, there's never been a better time th than now to homeschool your children, to homeschool your children. Don't listen to these big Eva charlatans. These wolves, don't listen to them. Even when they're women, they're still wolves. They're Jezebels that they want to, they want to, they don't care about your children. They care, they have another agenda. They don't care about your children. I'm not telling you what their other agenda is because it's probably different for each person. But they have other concerns in mind. And so your children are within your control. Now is a good time to homeschool children. Guys, it's not instantly easy right homeschooling does have challenges it's not as hard as they want you to think it is but it does have challenges but you get through them it's part of being a parent you know you got to kind of suck it up sometimes it's hard to be a parent sometimes but you got to suck it up sometimes it's part of god's sanctification god sanctifies you through your children god sanctifies you through your children i don't know a single parent who hasn't seen Something about them that they know is not right. They know they, they hate it. They're trying to kill that sin. They see it in their children and they recognize, oh my goodness, my kids are copying my sin. I don't know a single parent that hasn't been struck by God in that way. And when you homeschool your children, there's going to be challenges, but it's ultimately, it's so rewarding. Any good thing has challenges. Any good thing has difficulties. But you meet the difficulties, you pray, you, you lean on the Lord for strength, for help, and you get through them. And it's, and look, I'm not through it yet. You know, I've got an eight year old, I've got a six year old, I've got a four year old, and I've got another one on the way. God willing, we'll see him very soon. But I know that when I started, we started this whole thing of, of teaching our kids and home, homeschooling. It was harder when we started than it is right now. And right now, it's, it's beautiful. You see, um, my four-year-old knows more than my eight-year-old did when he was four. You know what I mean? And, and part of the reason is because he's picking up things as we're teaching our eight-year-old. And then our eight-year-old will tur and turn around and teach the four-year-old. And it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, these are things w that are within your control. And so as a Christian father, the lion's share of your energy, your emotions, your time— your resources should be focused on the things that are more within your control, your family, your, ch your church, your local community, things like that. There's, it's so important to be focused on those things in times like this where, you're, where, 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 where people are trying to direct you. They're trying to herd you into certain things. Look, <laughs> The, the transsexual religion of our of our country. I mean, we're a transsexual country right now. That's that's the religion. You gotta respect these psychopaths, these demon possessed people. You've gotta make room for them. You've gotta you know do all you, all kinds of things. And and they'll th they'll do anything to, to to get you to do this. They'll threaten you. You know they'll threaten violence. They'll threaten sanctions. You know you know fines. You know the the cake factory thing. You know the cake court case, whatever it was. They'll do they'll, they'll they'll do all kinds of stuff to get you to go along or to get you to at least tolerate them or or to respect their ridiculous pronouns. There is no respect coming. Not from true believers. 
We do not respect your rebellion against our Lord. And we never freaking will. And so you guys do what you got to do, but we're going to do what we got to do. And we will be ready for you because true believers aren't going to forget the part about being wise as serpents. There's so many Christian voices out there that right now are begging you to be innocent as doves, but conveniently forgetting the other words of Jesus. And they do this all the time. It'll, they'll forget the, the wise, uh, wise as serpents, that goes down the memory hole. Harmless as doves, that's the one that does. Oh, love your neighbor as yourself, that doesn't go down the memory hole. But uh, sell your cloak and buy a sword, that goes down the memory hole. There are pe- these people have an agenda. They're cowards. They want. They they think that if they cave to this 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 freaking disgusting religion of transsexuality and homosexuality and all this pagan stuff, they think if they cave to it, they'll be left alone. And in their cowardice, they're going to find out one day that they will never be left alone. Christians, true Christians, aren't going to be fooled like that. <laughs> There's just no way. There's just no way. And so we will be innocent. We're not going to start anything. But we'll be wise and we'll be ready. And it's just that simple. And so Christian men, now is a good time to plan. Now is a good time to get ready. Now is a good time to practice. And to focus on the things that you have control over. And look, I'm not saying ignore the other stuff, but I'm saying... A lot less of your energy and emotions and time should be spent on those things. By the way, fake Christians like to tell you that that's wrong, too. They like to tell you that, oh, it's it's wrong to focus on your family and to take care of your family. And it's like these people are sick. They're absolutely sick. And they want you to join their sickness. They're cowards. They're fools. They're sick. And they want everyone to be cowardly and foolish and sickly like them. I'm talking about Big Eva. I'm talking about the Jen Wilkins of the world. I'm talking about the Matt Chandlers of the world. I'm talking about Tim Keller. They want you to be sick like them. Don't do it. Don't do it. These are the ones that back in the stories were relying on Egypt. These are the Israelites that were relying on the chariots and the power and the might of Egypt instead of relying on the Lord. They'll tell you that you're those Christians, right? You're those Christians that are doing that. No, that's them. That's them. They're the Pharisees in the story. They're the unfaithful Israelites. They're the ones that were intermarrying. They're, they're those Israelites. But we're not going to be that way. We're not going to be halfway Christians. We're not going to remember half of Jesus' words, half of Jesus' activities, half of Jesus' predictions. We're going to remember all of them. And it's just that simple. But Christian men, my biggest thing, if you don't hear anything else here, my biggest thing that I, I have for you today is now is a good time to take a deep breath. Now is the time to make sure, make sure that you've got your wits about you because it is so easy to fall into these, these rage spirals, these, these states of mind where you're not thinking straight. Now is a good time to make sure you are sober-minded. That's all I have for you today. God bless you. I hope you found this video helpful. God bless.